They say that racing improves the breed, and for many cars, competition success adds a gloss of showroom desirability. But what about those cars where any performance aspirations are a long way from their original design remit? Surely they should be allowed some fun too. Here's our roundup of the most unlikely racing cars ever. And if you do enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe for more from Goodwood Road and Racing. Most Peugeot 806s have been long forgotten after a life of school runs, trips to the tip and the gentle strains of the daily grind. But this one had a claim to fame in the pro car class of the 1995 Spa 24 Hours. It was fielded by Peugeot's Belgian distributor and built by Kronos Racing, who would eventually go on to build rally cars for Sebastian Loeb. Out went six of the seven seats, and in came 405 MI16 running gear, the engine block from a Group A 306, and the cylinder head from a 405 Super Touring. Taking 12th on the grid and 3rd in class was enough to silence the cynics, but sadly, there was no fairy tale. It failed to finish due to an engine problem. Okay, this one isn't quite what it seems. With its tubular chassis, composite body and a Chevrolet V8 engine, it's more a kit car than a Rolls Royce. But who can't fail to be captivated by the sight of what appears to be the ultimate in luxury ripping through the desert? The jacked up, knobbly tired look is backed up by Toyota Land Cruiser axles, and the whole idea was dreamed up during an over dinner wager that a Rolls Royce could take on the gruelling Paris Dakar rally in 1981. And it did, with this Corniche being rustled up in time for the legendary Enduro. Sadly, an illegal repair meant the car wasn't classified in the results, but it was lying as high as 13th overall at the halfway mark. Another luxury car turned racer. The Tatra T603 was a high-speed express with a reputation for tricky handling. Its air-cooled V8 was flung out aft of the rear axle and tended to act as a pendulum to catch out the unwary. Not the easiest car to pilot around the challenging Nürburgring for 84 hours. Yes, 84. Why 84? Well, the Marathon de la Route evolved from a road race to an extremely lengthy endurance race around the Nordschleife eventually becoming the flabby three and a half times around the clock race that Tatra would enter. In 1967, the Tatra achieved a top five finish, but it was no fluke. The T603 won 60 out of the 79 races it was entered in, and good revival visitors will have been able to see it in action in 2008, 2010 and 2012. Weird, yes, but not bad. Before BMW took the rights to build the Assetto bubble car, it looked set to become an Italian icon, having been designed and built by ESO, they of Revolta and Grifo fame. And it was in Italy where it took on its pluckiest motorsport challenge, the 1954 Mille Miglia. The little Assetto was the first to depart and the last to arrive, taking 22 hours, 10 minutes and 2 seconds to complete the course just a year before Sterling Moss would set a new record over the 1,000-mile course in almost exactly 12 hours less. But the fact that it finished is more than can be said for some of its competitors, and therefore something of an achievement in itself. The Smart for Two is arguably the spiritual successor to the Yasetta, but for its own competition exploits, it only ever competed against itself. Yes, in one of the most unlikely single-make race series since gridfalls of Citroen 2CVs first took to race circuits, Smart for Twos had their own race series. 
The sight of a pack of upright two-seaters, not known for their handling prowess, vying for positions, is one you needed to witness to believe. Italy even has a series for just the electric-powered Smart EQ. Well, if city car single-make racing seems unlikely, then how about a herd of marauding builders' pickups? Sanyong thought it would be a good idea, and the Sanyong Racing Challenge was born in the UK in 2017. But it wasn't the first of its kind. New Zealand had a Sanyong Single Make Pickup, or should we say Ute, series as early as 2014 with the Action. A decade before Volvo 850 Estates appeared in the British Touring Car Championship and became legends, the 240 Saloon was making its presence felt in the European Touring Car Championship. And, where the 850 struggled to keep pace with the competition, the 240 was capable of sticking it to the ostensibly superior rivals from BMW and Jaguar. It was nicknamed the Flying Brick, because while, yes, it looked like a brick, it certainly flew. In fact, the Flying Brick took the ETCC title in 1985 after winning six of the 14 races that season. In the 1980s, the Skoda Istel had none of the retro cool vibes that bolster its image today. Instead, it was the butt of many jokes that those of us old enough will still remember. The Estel 130 LR, or surprising Skoda, as toymaker Matchbox hailed it, was fitted with a limited slip differential and side-draft Weber carburettors, and went some way to turning the jokes back on the critics by becoming a genuinely acceptable rallying machine. It racked up numerous class wins and podium finishes, but it was the car's robust construction that really impressed. It finished a remarkable 82.5% of the events it entered. That's quite a punchline. That is our choice of the motorsport oddities we find the most puzzling. But let us know in the comments below which are your favourite racing weirdos.